What's up guys? So Fire Emblem Three Hopes has been out for about a month now, and I finally finished my very first playthrough of the game, which as the title states is the Golden Deer's Route, Golden Wildfire. And in this video, I'm going to essentially review my thoughts and all of my gripes on this route in its entirety. Which, despite what the title says, I really do love this route and enjoyed it so much. But when all is said and done, just like in Three Houses, unfortunately it just felt like the developers didn't really know what to do with the Golden Deers, and it just borderline ruins the whole route when you think about it in its entirety, but I'll obviously get into that later. So with that being said, I'm going to be spoiling a lot of major plot points for the Golden Wildfire's bad ending. But I will be light on the details just in case you haven't played it just yet and you don't want everything spoiled. But if you don't want any spoilers, spoilers whatsoever, feel free to come back to this video after you've finished your playthrough. In the meantime, I'm going to try to speed run through the story in the most concise way possible for the sake of brevity of course. So let's get into it. Now, with the prologue and the first few chapters of the game, it's essentially the same regardless of the route that you choose. You save Monica, Thomas is revealed to be evil, and then the Golden Deers have a fight with the neighboring country of Almira, and the Garrick Mach is obviously shut down. Then two years later, the war breaks out. Now honestly, in the beginning, I thought that this had potential to be one of the best routes in the game because, of course, this game is a spin-off, and that means that there was opportunity to expand on Claude's past more than just the vague bits and pieces that we had to put together in Three Houses, like we're the world's greatest detective. But before I deep dive into Claude and Almira, let's continue on with the story. Now initially when Edelgard starts the war, the Empire invades Leicester when a few houses defect to the Empire, and as any good leader does, Claude wasn't putting up with that shit. And he launched a counter-offensive, which after a handful of chapters eventually leads to a huge battle on the bridge that connects the Empire to Leicester. And surprisingly, Leicester ends up winning, and they are even able to push into the Empire to gain control of some land and gain an upper hand in the war. But unfortunately, that opportunity was cut surprisingly short when the Almirans led by Shahid return for yet another fight at Fothan's Locket, despite getting their asses handed to them two years prior. But this time around, the force that Shahid brings with him is vastly greater than the one beforehand, which just proves to all of us that he's definitely overcompensating for something. Now this is where the route hits its peak for me because just before this fight, Claude was able to show the power of the alliance to Edelgard and even makes the Empire question if the war with Leicester was even worth it at this point. Which finally gives us a very much needed out of the war. So Claude and the Alliance are now perfectly set up to go ahead and just explore Almira and focus on the backstory of Claude. But for whatever reason, they didn't take that opportunity. I feel like it's such a confusing decision in hindsight. And originally my response was, okay, that's a little weird, but now we at least get to return to conquering the Empire. But instead of that, immediately after the fight with Shahid, well, not really immediately because there was a weird 8 month time skip that really had no effect on the plot of the story whatsoever. And I know that it was just the alliance becoming the federation and Claude officially being given the title of king even though he has always been a king in my heart, but all jokes aside. Claude goes to Edelgard despite having the upper hand in this situation, and he goes to her without having a single demand whatsoever. Like, he genuinely didn't ask anything of Edelgard whatsoever. He didn't ask for any land, any resources, or to just be left alone out of this war. I personally would have been happy if he asked anything. Like, it could have been something as simple as having Ferdinand cut his hair so Claude has no more competition for best hair in the game. I mean, of course there is to do, but he hasn't seen to do at this point so but instead as i said he asks absolutely nothing of her and just agrees to join her war with fargus and afterwards claude discusses the whole situation like he barely had the right to approach her in the first place which he literally was acting like he didn't have edelgard in a metaphorical chokehold because of the fact that his forces were occupying the empire's biggest food source he literally could have asked anything of her and i genuinely just don't understand the decision behind that narratively or otherwise. Both the, oh, we're losing this war even though we're really 
clearly not, but let's put this all behind us and forge an alliance with the people who started the war in the first place, and also the decision to partner up with Edelgard at all. Especially when you consider that though it is revealed later that Claude actually agrees with Edelgard's rhetoric about wanting reform to the Crest system, at this point in time, we don't know his stance on this. We don't know his stance on any of this situation outside of the fact that he just wants this war to stop as soon as possible. So, if he doesn't want this war to go on any longer, why doesn't he keep pushing deeper and deeper into the Empire's territory? Because he totally can, until the point that Edelgard has no choice but to listen to his demands and end the war, despite the fact that she doesn't really want to. But, I digress. Honestly, beyond this point in the story, I just feel like this route has lost all sense of direction going forward. Because as a repercussion of obviously joining forces with the Empire, you have to invade Fargus, and the way that the game decides to have you invade Fargus is with the help of one of the Almiran's generals, Nadir, who developed a brotherhood with Hilda's brother Holst from seemingly out of nowhere. Which is great, like, I don't personally have any issues with this situation, I just genuinely would have loved to to see them actually interact with one another, mostly just because I can't get enough of Holst. From his support conversations with Hilda and Shez alone, I just can't see why anyone would dislike Holst as a character. And I just really would have loved to see some more cutscenes with Nadir because I kind of felt like Nadir had a lot of potential, but that's aside the point again. Now, when you finally get to the capital of the kingdom, which is your objective, Claude wants to speak to Dimitri directly and convince convince him to cut ties with the central church because he feels that this will stop the war between the three nations, which Dimitri and his advisors have already deduced on their own. See what I did there? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! And right before they are finally able to have that conversation, you have to retreat back to the Federation for, upon its face value, the most redundant and annoying reason in the world. At first, it is presented as a massive bandit attack on the Ordalia territory, which throughout the whole game, it's made very clear that their military prowess is lackluster at best. And before I say this, Lysithia is my favorite character in Three Houses and probably in this game, but a full-scale retreat where you straight up abandon a whole bunch of resources and also straight up throw the opportunity to end the war in the garbage just for bandits? Are you serious? That just isn't even remotely appropriate for the situation at hand. But of course, it's later revealed that the attack was actually orchestrated by those who slither in the dark, and now I've seen a lot of people hold the same opinion that I have about this situation. But if the attack was orchestrated by those who slither in the dark, then why didn't the developers just have a bunch of demonic beasts rampaging in that area? Because that literally in itself makes this situation that much more of an issue, and it actually justifies a full-scale retreat to the level that we are described in the game. And before I move on, narratively, this situation makes zero sense to begin with. Because the goal for those who slither in the dark is they want to destroy Rhea, Sedith, Flane, and everybody else of their race. So, if Claude manages to get Dimitri to stop defending the Central Church, then their goal will become achieved that much faster because both the Federation and the Empire can just focus all of their efforts on killing Rhea. It's just such a weird decision that's made by whoever wrote this story. Personally, I feel like at most, if this decision was made just to extend the length of the game, just Right it to whether A, Dimitri refuses Claude's proposition and they have to fight a little bit more because that's the whole point of this game. And after said fighting, the reinforcements from the Western Front show up to save the day, which I'm pretty sure Sylvain recommended having reinforcements from the Western Front in that same cutscene that I made that terrible to do joke in reference to. So this situation is totally plausible. And look, we already have to suspend our belief that an entire army can move at the speeds that which it does throughout this entire route anyways, so why not just abuse it to make the story better? 
or even we could go with option B, which personally I view as more realistic. Dimitri agrees to do as Claude proposes because he already discussed this exact thing earlier in the game as a possibility. And in Golden Wildfire, Dimitri later makes this same exact decision right after the final fight at Garrick Mach. And it's not exactly like he's in a position to decline Claude's proposition in the first place, but despite Dimitri agreeing to sever ties with the Central Church, Edelgard refuses to stop this war, and because of her warmongering, the Federation and Kingdom forge an alliance against her. Which is a totally valid option as well because Claude wants to stop this war by any means necessary. And it only makes sense that if Edelgard refuses to stop until she conquers Fargus, then Claude would definitely fight her yet again. Because he says several times throughout this game, without Fargus at worst, there is nothing stopping Edelgard from conquering Leicester, and at best, the Federation ends up a vassal of the Empire, neither of which is something that Claude wants. And I so desperately want to talk more about Claude, but I want to finish my thoughts on the entirety of the story before I get to him. Because with both the issues that I have with him and everything I love about him, it's a lot. Moving on. After successfully defending Ordelia's territory, we're informed that Edelgard is fighting a losing battle against the Central Church and the Kingdom. And Lorenz suggests letting her die, just like Claude decided to do with Randolph earlier in the game. And honestly, I'll expand on this more in the Claude section, but he definitely should have made the decision to sit this fight out. But because of one of the lamest and most disappointing character developments that any of these characters in these games have been given, he decided to back her up, despite the fact that letting her die is literally the better option. Because it would end the war, and it's literally stated in the same exact conversation that the Empire would effectively fall apart without her since there is no heir to her throne. But maybe that's too easy of a way to end the war, what do I know? Following saving the day, from the Empire's perspective at least, Dimitri retreats to the direction of the Western Front with Edelgard in hot pursuit, while Claude follows Rhea and the church as they go to the same field that just so happens to be where Saros defeated Nemesis. And after Rhea makes her last stand, in what was literally the most heartbreaking fight of this game to me at least, because for a second I really thought thought they were going to force me to kill Mercedes, and no one wants to kill the most caring and pure character in the game. That's just cruel. But after getting baited into tearing up over nothing, and the fight was all said and done, in the bad ending of this route, the game just ends? Now I think it's a little weird that the devs decided to lock the conclusion to the those who slither in the dark plot behind recruiting Byleth, because excuse my French, but saying fuck the plot point that involves the literal whole actual reason for this war in the first place, that very same plot point as if we didn't just defend Lysithia's territory from them, on top of Lysithia and Shez having a whole cutscene, having a conversation with Cl Claude saying that they want to catch whoever is behind all of this so they can pay for what they did to Lysithia as well as possibly fixing what they did and so Shez can find answers to who they really are. But forget all the resolution to literally 50% of the game, you get revenge on Byleth and kill Rhea. Who cares about those who slither in the dark anymore, am I right? It's not like the protagonist and a lord of Leicester need the resolution to their stories or anything anyways. And not to mention, from the context of Three Houses, this would also affect Hilda and Holst, since Shambhala is also located in the vicinity of both their territories and Lysithia's. And on top of that, Leone was pissed about learning this information information regarding Lysithia as well, so several characters don't get their resolutions to this specific subject whatsoever. And on top of that, there's other characters that this affects outside of the Golden Deers as well. And it's just super super fucking weird to me that they would choose to cut this because of not recruiting Byleth? I don't know. But seriously, I feel like the proper bad end, and this is a hypothetical, and this hypothetical is all based on assumptions I am making about the good end, because I'm just assuming that Byleth is important to Shez not losing their shit. And if that's not the case, then it also makes even less sense that the good end is locked behind recruiting Byleth. But anyways, personally, since you killed Byleth, Shez just goes evil. That's the bad end. Now, the specific bad end that I have in mind 
for the golden wildfire route is Shez slaughtering some of the golden deers, possibly two or three that you have the most support conversations unlocked with, to be specific. So for this specific example, let's say Hilda, Happy, and Raphael. So watching you kill some of your favorite characters makes this whole situation that much more upsetting, therefore solidifying this is the bad end. And this cutscene ends with Shez either killing Lysithia in an even more super depressing cutscene, finishing with Claude killing Shez, or Lysithia and Claude killing Shez in a equally upsetting and depressing cutscene because Shez's body is taken over by however the fuck you say this name in the exact same way that Sothis hijacked Byleth's body earlier in the game. And unfortunately, killing Shez is the only way to stop the rampage. But that is just my opinion on how the bad end should be. If you feel like it should end differently, let me know in the comments. But overall, I don't think that the Golden Wildfire's story is terrible by any means. I just really think that they lost focus of what they wanted to do several times. And there are also some portions of the story that I feel like they made changes to the story and just completely forgot to change the dialogue. One specific example is with Claude wanting to stick it to Dimitri before the Garrick Mach fight, saying something along the lines of, let's see if this will get through his thick skull. I feel like that was really out of place because he says that despite the fact that Claude was generally very respectful whenever he referred to Dimitri throughout this entire game, as well as wanting to stop fighting with the kingdom specifically above all else. I just think, as I said earlier, Golden Wildfire was just given the short end of the stick, just like with Verdant Wind, because they chose not to expand on the backstory of Claude, and they purposely have the Federation be on the back foot the entirety of the second half of the game, despite there actually being no reason for it. And all of those things combined just really killed the route for me, but its saving grace was honestly none other than Claude and of course the rest of the Golden Deers, but if I wanted to get into the detail about everything I love about the rest of the Golden Deers, this video would literally be like 40 minutes long. But I am going to just stick strictly to Claude because oh boy did this character get fleshed out so much more in this game, and honestly his character was a million trillion billion times better in this game than in Three Houses, that is just my personal opinion, but if you disagree agree, you're wrong. I'm sorry. Now, I've seen a lot of people say he was mischaracterized in Three Hopes, but as weird as it sounds, he actually was mischaracterized in Three Houses, according to the devs. Like, they toned his character back a lot for Three Houses, and I kind of see how this statement is valid because he felt really one-dimensional in Three Houses, to me at least. But I also kind of feel like they toned him back a little bit more for Three Hopes for reasons that I will explain in a little bit. But despite him being toned down a little bit in Three Hopes, as I said, he's infinitely more enjoyable and just as interesting of a character in my opinion. So of course, he's extremely crafty, cunning as hell, and very mischievous. And that's what gave me so much enjoyment in this playthrough, because it always felt like Claude was playing 4D chess, while whoever the opponent at the time was is still playing checkers. A prime example of this is closer to the beginning of the game, when House Gloucester and Ordelia and a few others defect to the Empire. It was such an insane plot twist that the whole time it was actually Claude's idea to have them defect to the Empire so Claude could get the jump on Edelgard's forces. That moment was where I fell in love with Claude's character. The fact that he would take those risks without a second thought like that, where we all know Dimitri and Edelgard guard would never make those same decisions in a million years. On top of that, he also did it for the benefit of those houses, because if the Empire happened to overwhelm Leicester's forces, those several territories would never be touched. And it's so mind-blowing that a leader of a country would actually make those kinds of decisions. And honestly, I thought having a faction leader who would do whatever underhanded method they had to, to not only minimize losses, but also ensure the win was just 
Such an amazing choice for Claude. And it became even more reinforced later in the story when we are sent to rescue Randolph and his forces from a losing fight against Catherine and the Church of Saros. And Claude decides to use Randolph as bait, sacrificing him and all of the Empire's forces in the area to secure a victory. Something that no one else would not only think to do, but also would not have the guts to do. Regardless of how detestable of an action you think that was, it's so true to his characterization in this game, and I love it. But in game, obviously, if you've played through it, no one else was having it. Throughout the whole fight, everyone was obviously pissed with Claude's decisions. I just want to say, by the way, this fight I am talking about is my favorite in the entire game. Honestly, this it, it I can't explain it enough. It was just such a good experience. I was genuinely in love with the thought of being an anti-hero faction with an extremely morally great leader. That is some serious distinction that I feel the Golden Deer's route desperately needed. But unfortunately, the devs decided to have Claude do a complete 180 and only do the right thing, whether it is a smart decision or not. And Claude's new development was only reinforced by losing Judith when Randolph little sister decided to retaliate. And unfortunately, that's the only issue I have with Claude's character. The fact that they made him the most unique that any Lord has been in any of the Fire Emblem games I've had the opportunity to play, and the devs decided to backpedal on it immediately and make him always base his decisions off of my friends will be mad at me if I don't do the right thing, which was extremely disappointing. I understand the motivations behind it because he does care about his friends above all else, but at the same time, he was doing all of this because of them in the first place, and I feel like since he's the king, he shouldn't really give a shit like Dimitri. Because yeah, sure, I'm suggesting that they copy-paste one quality from Dimitri, but everyone loves Edgelord Dimitri, and I feel like Claude doing what he thinks is best instead of listening to what the Golden Deers think is best would make this story infinitely more interesting. And before I forget, this is less of an issue I have with Claude and more just the missed opportunity that I mentioned in the story section, but the fact that the devs made the conscious decision to be somewhere between a little less vague to arguably equally as vague about Claude's backstory was just... I don't know if lazy's the right word, but that's all I can think of to describe it. Like. The most we got of Claude's origin was him calling Shahid his brother before he killed him. And we don't know if this meant brother as in Claude is also an Almiran prince, or brother as in you're my people kind of thing. Unless you get Claude's A support where you can tease him about being a member of the Elmiran royal family. I genuinely feel like that's just not enough, and I know Claude doesn't want to talk about it, but introduce a character who does want to talk about it, and does know what's going on. Like, I think that they should have made it so Nadir knows exactly what happened with Claude because honestly it kind of makes no sense to me that Nadir doesn't because Nadir's a general, who clearly is friends with the king, given some of the things that he said. But at the end of the day, it's still just what I think. I just really hate how the world around Foldland is just a huge gray area that we know nothing about, and though we do get some glimpses from Dadu, Shamir, and Petra with their respective countries, we also get almost nothing from Almira, and they're more involved with the plot than any of the other aforementioned characters' origin countries aside from Dadu. And it's just weird. Is it just me? I don't understand why Dadu does this better than Claude, and Claude's a faction leader and Dadu is a support character to the faction leader. And actually, I think we get more information about Shamir's origin country than the both of them, and she's, like, a side side character. <sighs> Genuinely though, let me know what you think in the comments. But with all of that being said, if you've watched all of this video, seriously, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I may also make a video for the Blue Lions and Black Eagles routes, but if enough of you want to see it, I definitely will make a video about my thoughts. So if you'd like to see those videos, let me know in the comments. And if you do want to see them on top of leaving a comment, also make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one.